Hi friends, this is Ron with Mobile Fix Automotive again. Today we're going to be working on a coolant leak for a 2012 Dodge Durango that's got a 3.6 liter in it. And uh, I'm going to pause the video here and take you underneath the car and show you where the leak's coming from and then I'll show you uh, what to look for. Okay, so we're underneath the vehicle. It's up on the lift right now. Um, Basically, the customer's complaint was a large coolant leak to the ground that they couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And if you look here on the bottom of the uh, transmission oil pan, you're going to see a bunch of coolant dripping. There's trails coming down from the top of the bell housing on both sides of the uh, transmission, as well as uh, stains here on the frame. So we had coolant coming off the back of the engine. There were no apparent hoses leaking. Um, uh, or any freeze plugs that we could find and this is where the uh, the interesting diagnosis came into play because this is the first time I've come across this um, but I did find out through my research this is actually a pretty common problem and it's not really a big deal to fix although it was kind of one of those uh, engineering marvels that you kind of wonder about uh, so we're going to pause the video here I'm going to set the vehicle down and then we're going to go from the top side and I'm going to show you what you got to do to look for to make sure that this is the leak and what you got to do to fix it. All right. Okay, so now that we've got the vehicle back on the ground, um, I kind of suspected that whatever was leaking coolant was leaking from either the rear or underneath the intake manifold, the lower intake manifold, which on this car is nearly impossible to see and or get to. Um, I did something a little unique on this because I've already torn this vehicle down to be able to do a positive ID on where the leak was coming from. I had to do disassembly. So this video is being shot to help you guys out that have these engines, the 3.6 Dodge VVT motors. Um, according to Dodge, uh, they sell a lot of these cooler units. So I've already tore this down. So basically the pieces we're gonna take off, you're not gonna see me use any tools because I've already done this. So the first thing you're gonna need to do if you have that leak coming off the back of the engine and you know that you can't find it, is get rid of your dust shield. This is your, basically your, your splash shield for the top of your engine, kind of keeps the noise down and everything. Uh, the next thing you'll be removing is you're gonna be removing your air intake hose that goes from your air filter box to your throttle body unit and it's basically pushed down just like the the top piece where it's got the little ball socket with the rubber bushings they just snap in there's no bolts necessary so the only thing you have to do is unbolt your clamps pull your electrical connector off your uh, uh, intake air temperature and then you set that out of the way and what you're going to be left with is you're going to be looking at this now, mind you, there's already wires disconnected. We're not going to get into step-by-step -step teardown because um, if you can work on this engine, that's probably going to be something you can do on your own anyway. So the next step I had to do was there's a plastic hose that runs from the top of the intake manifold over to the purge control solenoid, which I already pushed the button on, so that has to come off. Once that's off... This is where the fun part comes in. And what's our favorite saying together? Engineers, Engineers should, should not, not be allowed, allowed to work, work unsupervised. unsupervised. This one, would it, would, I, would it be correct if I said this is the epitome of that? Would that be proper language? Okay, so uh, I have to make sure I speak correctly, otherwise my son corrects me a lot. Um, but, but basically the reason why I'm saying that is this intake manifold, the upper intake plenum, I should say, the upper intake plenum took me almost as long to remove it as the job pays to do the whole thing because on the older Chryslers, the Chrysler 300s, which I'm very familiar with, they have these little studs. Come on over here and let's show these to them. They have these little studs right here on the plastic manifolds that go down into a steel bracket. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, they can see that. Okay, now what's different, what the engineers did different on this engine that they, that they changed from the Chrysler 300 style, is on the Chrysler 300, at least the ones that I've done, you can put a, an E5 Torx socket and unscrew these and leave the brackets in place and just lift the manifold up, which makes things really easy. On this, it's hard to see it, but right here at the base of this stud, there is a washer. That washer is part of this stud. So if you go to take this out, 
on the bracket, this stud's going to want to push the bracket outwards, so you're not going to be able to just pull the studs out anymore and lift the manifold up. So that was one of the, my pet peeves with the engineers on this one. I don't know why they had to go to this style because I lost a lot of time trying to get that out of there. I will tell you this, this bracket here, the forward bracket on the driver's side that we just looked at, you see it's loose, but it's not off. All I had to do was go under there and loosen that bracket. The rear bracket, I tried everything I could do, including bleeding, and could not get that bracket loose off the cylinder head. There was no access for me with my Popeye arms. I had another mechanic from another shop next door come over here, and, and uh, Juan was gracious enough to try to get that bracket loose for me, and he was unable to do it. So what we found out was, is you don't really need to take that bracket loose. You can just slide the manifold out. <clears throat> so there's, there's basically to get the upper intake plenum off, you have two 10 millimeter nuts that are on this side over here on those studs I was telling you about. And then in the rear of the engine compartment, right behind this uh, throttle body unit, you can see another stud right here. There's that stud and then a hidden one in the back. There's two nuts there. And then a bracket that goes down into the back of the uh, cylinder head on the passenger side and it has the, it's a 13 millimeter on this one that holds that bracket on and that one was also fun to get to. Um, so once I took that bracket off and made sure that all my electrical connectors were disconnected off the throttle body unit and eight millimeter for the screws, I basically took and lifted this up, slid it out and my intake plenum is now off the engine. Okay, so now we're left with this. It's getting better, huh? So, this is a little piece of, yeah. We're gonna put it back, don't ask me, I don't know. It's either sound deadening, uh, heat transfer, it's only on the side where the plenum wraps over the valve cover, so uh, I'm not really sure exactly why they did that. So once we get to this point, if you notice, you still can't see the coolant leak on the back of the engine. Can't get your hand back there, can't get a mirror back there. It's just a nightmare at this point. So now you take your electrical connectors off of your fuel injectors on both sides. There's six injectors on this engine. And then you release your fuel pressure. There's a nice little uh, quick clip that you push on this one when I went to go do the quick clip, the quick clip, uh, oh, that's almost a tongue twister, kind of broke on me and I found out from the dealer that that clip is not available separately so I had to buy a new fuel line which was actually 14 bucks, that wasn't that bad. So once, once I loosened the eight millimeter bolts that hold that down, the lower intake manifold comes off. And guys, I want you to notice this. See how I have paper towels shoved down in the ports? This is so that if I drop something or if something flies across a shop, uh, whatever, it doesn't go down inside the engine. And you'll notice that once I pulled this off, there's six more. Like I said, I already had this apart for diagnostic. So what I'm doing is just making sure nothing falls down inside the engine because if there's anything in there, washers, bolts, or anything metallic, it's going to destroy the motor when you start it or engine, Let's be proper, proper language. It's an engine, not a motor. Okay, so now I'm gonna go grab my trusty flashlight. And this piece right here is the engine oil cooler. And I'm not gonna make you wait for me to unbolt it and pull it out. Can you see the coolant down in there, Justin? Can you get a, a view in the back of the engine coolant that's down? Basically, the coolant's all underneath this. I know it's really hard to see with the camera. We're filming this with a cell phone, not with a, uh, a GoPro or anything with a small camera on it, so I can't get down in there. But I'm gonna show you what this piece looks like off the engine. This is the, uh, and once again, I like to use factory motor parts as much as I can. This is genuine Mopar. Some will argue if it failed this early. I think this car's got 82,000 miles on it. Some argue with me, well, if it already failed at 82, why put the factory part back in? It's just going to fail again. Because the aftermarket parts seem to fail even more than the factory parts do. And I'd just rather not go in and do it 
twice. This is an engine oil cooler assembly. It is in the vehicle in this configuration. If you notice, this is the oil, engine oil filter. This is the engine oil filter housing. This is the heat transfer system for the oil cooler. And it, it, this comes from the factory. It's called a kit. It comes with the sensors, uh, the O-rings. My suspicion is, is either it's leaking through right here or it's leaking around one of these seals that's dried out. Um, I haven't pulled that part off yet, so I don't know exactly where the, or the or origin part of the leak is. But this is the engine oil cooler assembly and it's underneath the lower intake plenum. So to do this job properly, like I said, the little, the little clip on the fuel line, which is this little white piece right here, when you push these things in, they spread out, and then you can safely pull your line off. When I went to go push it, it exploded, broke into two pieces, and so I couldn't reuse it. And then one of the other things I'm gonna do, even though these gaskets on the intake are technically considered reusable gaskets, uh, this job is being done for a warranty company. The vehicle is uh, under, under an extended warranty program, and uh, I'm going to make sure that this job's right and I don't have to go back into it. These gaskets were, I think, 72 cents a piece, and there's six of them on the lower and six on the upper, so it's a relatively cheap uh, insurance policy anyway. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, so basically, once again, it's a 2012 Dodge Durango. It's got a 3.6 in it. And at this point, for you, if you're doing it yourself or if you're having a shop do it, I went ahead and convinced my customer to go ahead and let me change the six spark plugs because these three coils on this side and these three spark plugs are underneath that intake plenum. So to be able to change these spark plugs, which his tune-up's going to be due within the next 20,000 miles, he's already got over 80,000 on it now. Um, it doesn't make sense for him to pay two hours labor to r and that plenum again. Um, for an extra half an hour plus the spark plugs, it's done. His tune-up is done for another 100,000 miles and, and uh, they can uh, move on down the road. So if you have a really bad coolant leak on one of these 3.6s in your Dodge and you can't find it, it's coming off the back of the, uh, the bell housing, uh, this is more than likely the culprit. So keep your eye out and uh, just to give you an idea, uh, the, this job pays 2.7 hours on the Mitchell book. I think all data calls for 2.5. I'm about three hours into it right now doing diagnostics, but the first hour and a half of that was me trying to use a, a, a camera or a, a mirror to try to get underneath the back of the manifold and find the leak, which I couldn't do. So if you have any questions, you're always welcome to, to give me a call, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. This is Ron with Mobile Fix Automotive.